by Setuka, despite promises made during the 2015 election, President Muhammadu Buhari has failed to inaugurate the National Council on Public Procurement, NCPP, as required by the Public Procurement Act 2007. Instead, the Federal Executive Council, FEC, under the leadership of the President, continues to usurp the most important function of the NCPP, approval of contracts. The Public Procurement Act, which was signed into law by late President Umaru Yorodio on June 4, 2007 provides for the establishment of the NCPP, and the Bureau of Public Procurement, BPP, as the regulatory authorities responsible for the monitoring and oversight of public procurement as well as harmonizing existing government policies and practices. The Act was put in place to allow transparency and ensure public participation in government procurement. Mr. Yorodio, who signed the Act into law, however, failed to inaugurate the NCPP until his death in office. His successor, Good luck Jonathan, who stayed in office for six years also failed to inaugurate the council. Mr Buhari has till date also towed the path of his predecessors in violating the law. For weeks, Premium Times tried to get Mr. Buhari's spokesperson, Garba Shehu, to explain why the president has chosen to ignore the act and refused to set up the NCPP, or whether he plans to do so. He repeatedly declined comment on the matter. Nigerians react the failure of the president and his predecessors to put the NCPP in place has been condemned by experts and anti-corruption activists. A former Minister of Education, Obiagli Ezekwezali, described the refusal of successive governments to inaugurate the council as a reflection of the poor governance history of many African countries. Mrs. Ikwazali, pioneer head of the Budget Monitoring and Price Intelligence Unit under the Alasegu Obesajo administration, said the refusal has to do with the priority of those in government. It has to do with the prioritization, I mean the priority that the political class gives to transactions above vision, strategy and policy, she said. Transactions provide the opportunity for corruption so they will like to have much more control over that than give it up to some institutional mechanisms like the council. How do you begin to explain an illegality that one administration after the other has made since that law was passed in 2007? There is no other way to explain that illegality than to say that there is no incentive on the part of the political class to do what the law technically has recommended. That recommendation is the best way to direct the energy of the political class towards the most important activity that should worry them while leaving the council to operate in the way that it was envisaged. So, if they have no incentive to set up the council, it could only be because they are very much interested in transactions and the cabinet ought not to be interested in transactions, she said. In his reaction, the Executive Director of Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, Sislak, Awal Rafsaja, said it is unfortunate that the APC administration that came on the hope of fighting corruption and save the country from total collapse has also joined the bandwagon in violating the law. Mr. 